So I want to start this presentation by telling you that you can do this. And so maybe this presentation is a little bit of a pep talk mixed with an instruction manual, but you can do this. And part of how you're going to do this is if you win the license, you're going to go out and raise money. And we heard from Chi earlier about um, kind of like the fundraising 101. So when you went out into the world, you would feel like you understood what people were saying, you would feel like you knew the terminology, um, and you could start to kind of craft your fundraising approach. And so you can think of that as the more amorphous side of fundraising, but you need to go to investors with something. Um, Chi is unique, as he told you, because he'll kind of take what, he, what you give him, um, but most investors want to see some traditional fundraising items in a packet that you send to them. Sometimes you're gonna send that to them uh, cold. Sometimes you're gonna have a warm introduction. Sometimes you're gonna meet somebody and, um, or friends and family, um, but you're going to need to put together a packet. And I believe in you and you can do this. So what do you use a pitch deck for? The first thing that you're gonna need for your packet is a pitch deck. And essentially all of these presentations that you've seen are a pitch deck. And a pitch deck is a PowerPoint presentation that does certain things. Pitch deck helps you raise money. I, I mean, kind of like fundamentally, a pitch deck helps you raise money. Um, and you're gonna need money, because this industry is super capital intensive, and you're gonna need it. Educating your investor. So you have a, investors like Chi who are um, hyper-educated in this space, they know everything there is to know. Um, they might know more than you know, but a lot of times you're gonna go talk to an investor who doesn't know anything about the marijuana industry. So you should use your pitch deck as an opportunity to educate your investor. If you're using your pitch deck with somebody who's a marijuana venture capitalist or a family office that's made investments into the space, you can kind of skip through some of that as you're talking um, or as you're presenting, or they'll skip through it when they're looking through your deck. But for everybody else, this is a new space, and they're going to need an education. I mentioned friends and family. And you've heard friends and family as a term, friends and family, mentioned through, I'd say, 50% of these presentations. And most early stage companies start by raising money from friends and family. I realize there's like some assumption built in there that friends and family have money to invest. but one piece of advice when we think about going and raising money is you raise the amount of money you need. So um, don't over raise. So you might want to go to your friends. You might want to go to your family. Maybe you have you know, a wealthy uncle or maybe you have a friend who has a successful business and they want to invest $25,000 or $10,000. A pitch deck is a great way to talk to your friends and family. And it's a little early to talk about it, but Selling your business is another way you might use a pitch deck. What do you need to know before you build it? So you should think of it as a slide presentation. And the first thing is, what is your business? And that's something as you're going through this application process, you should be thinking about anyway. What are you doing? Like, what, what's this thing you're building? You know, I am a dispensary brand catering to, um, you know, inexpensive flower purchase. I'm uh, really a manufacturer and I do edibles and other brands that are targeted towards, you know, menopausal women. I don't know. Um, but you need to be able to identify what is your business. It's the who are you, right? What is your strategic plan? Um, and that means kind of a lot of things, right? So you need to not just be able to go to an investor and be like, I'm going to have a dispensary. Because any sort of sophisticated investor, or frankly, anybody, is going to be like, that's great. You're going to have this store. I get it. I know what a retail store is. But how are you getting from idea, from concept, to um, actually having that store? And once you have the store open, what am I going to see in the next 24 months? So being able to express coherently your strategic plan is crucial. How much money do you need? 
This is a really tricky question. And you should think about these things as like actually going into your pitch deck. Like they're actually, we're gonna talk through it, but these things are actually gonna live in your deck. So how much money do you need? Investors are going to say to you, even if you put in your deck, how much are you raising? And you're gonna have to have an answer for that. And that has to be like a real answer. I mean, I had the opportunity to sit and look at some of the questions that were coming in and ask some of these questions. And one of the questions that we saw was, how do you know how much you need? And hopefully you learned some of that through these presentations. But if you missed it, I'm going to tell you, which is you are going to come up with, through research, through talking to people with experience, through outreach to investors, through your own imaginings, all of the things that are going to cost you money. I'm going to need shelves. I'm going to need to pay a marketing person. I'm going to need to pay lawyers. I'm going to need to pay accountants. And you're going to put numbers attached to those things, and you're going to come up with a bottom line. It is going to cost me $1,250,000 to open this dispensary. And you're going to be able to show through your financial model, and we're going to talk about that in this deck, you're going to be able to show how all of those expenses reach your final number. That's called use of funds. Lots of good data about your particular market and the market in general. When I've taught this pitch deck workshop, um, mostly we do these as workshops, sometimes we do these as slideshows, you m have to know about your own business. So what does the Arizona marijuana market look like? How much are dispensaries making? How much have we seen year over year growth? Google is amazing. Go Google it. Like this is this part you can do with not too much help. Just get on your computer and learn about your business. Investors expect you to understand the business you're going into. Really understand it. What kind of money you're raising. We talked about that in a number of different presentations. Mostly investors want to know, are you raising debt or are you raising equity? Are you taking out a loan or are you giving us part of the company? And without going too much over what we learned, you're going to want to be able to identify that for folks. What do you plan to do with it and who? And I added this in even though we have this kind of like use of funds conversation because you're also going to look at your SG&A, which is kind of like corporate expenses. So you're going to want to be able to say, I'm raising this money. Here's my use of funds. And when I break it down into my team, this is how we're spending it on people. This is how we're spending on leadership. This is how we're spending it on management. And investors want to know that. You're going to have to have your financial modeling done. I cannot do financial modeling. I'll be the first to tell you if you put an Excel spreadsheet in front of me, I will have a panic attack. And that's OK. You don't have to do everything yourself. I'm telling you in this presentation that there are people who make financial models for you. There are people in the marijuana industry who make financial models and have some institutional knowledge about what should go in those. Find those people. Reach out and ask folks for recommendations. Those people exist. You have to have your model done. Your model does two things. We'll talk about it in a second. It talks about how you're going to use your funds, and it talks. it's like a demonstration for your investor of how rich they're going to get. So that's how you will use it. And who are your competitors? So let's move on to the next slide, and we'll do a deeper dive into these. What is your business? I've said some of this, but I'm going to say a little bit of again. Investors want to know that you are an expert in your field. Investors want to know that you understand your own business. So those are two different things. That's two different things. Investors want to know that you understand the marijuana market. They are not expected to be experts, even though some of them are. Understanding your own business is understanding what you plan to do with your business, how it will run, how it will operate. Investors lose confidence if you do not understand how your business is going to work. I'm going to say this 200 times during this presentation. Go ask for help. There are people out there, people who are not your best friend, people who are not your mom or your dad, people who are not your like, you know, friend around the corner, who actually know what they are doing in this space, and they know what they're doing when it comes to fundraising. 
go outside your circle, vet the people you're working with. Carlos put up in his presentation this idea of competence and trustworthiness. That's a fantastic way to approach it. If you don't know the answers, go ask for help. Investors are not interested in you ideating about your business in your deck. So what does that even mean? Um, what that means is that your deck is not an opportunity to kind of like wander through um, your thoughts. So these are, when you are putting a, together a slide that is talking about what your business is, it is a concrete statement. I'm opening a chain of dispensaries in the Arizona marijuana market that is uh, catering to women and people over 60 because I'm gonna be operating in Green Valley where X number of people are over 75. It's a statement, right? It's not a, I think what I might be doing is this and I'm kind of hoping this is going to happen. It's not, these are concrete statements, short and simple, always use simple sentences. Investors wanna know why this plan will work, how it's disrupt disruptive, why you are the only one who can do this. It, it's pretty interesting to think about raising money under these circumstances, right? Because Arizona, like if you're raising money for a cookie company, um, you're gonna have to explain to an investor why your cookie company is like filling some sort of white space. What does white space mean? White space means there's a void Right, white space means that nobody has entered that part of the market or you are doing something that there's blank space to fill. So that just so you know, that's what that term means. Um, in this market, you're raising money off a license that is inherently valuable. And I mean valuable in terms of investor coming in and funding you to be successful. Um, that is inherently valuable because this is a constrained market, right? So if you're in another state, if you're in Oregon or California, and there's no, it's an unlimited number of licenses, you really have to explain why you're different and why you're disruptive. In Arizona, you can say, this is disruptive because there's only gonna be 200 of us. This is disruptive because the limited licenses create this like inherent disruption. Um, so. I think it's, a, it's something interesting to think about, but you're still going to need to explain, one, why it's disruptive, even if it's that simple, and two, why are you the one who can make it happen? And I think maybe you could think about it in a different way, which is that, let's say there are 10 you know, venture capital groups that invest solely in marijuana, and there are 26 licenses. Those 10, there's not just 10, by the way. I'm just using it as an example. Those 10 groups are going to come and talk to each licensee to see who is kind of the best bet. So you're gonna to wanna to be able to say, this is why you should bet on us. This is why we're gonna make good partners. This is why I'm the only one who can do this. And why does your business matter? Uh, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not you need to do something meaningful and important. Um, and I'm gonna, I have another slide that talks about this, but I wanna say it now. I mean, your business has to matter. It, it just has to. It doesn't mean that you have to be like, I'm an environmental steward, or I'm giving all of my money to help people who were previously incarcerated. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying, why is your business important? Why should your investor believe in this concept? Whatever your concept may be. So you're gonna need a team slide. You should think about each of these things in terms of an outline for a slide deck, right? It's a slide deck. Your pitch deck is a slide deck. You must have a team. You must have a team. And, and you can also, I think, think about this presentation in terms of like foundationally building your business. So you need a team. You are not an island. You cannot do this by yourself. Um, investors invest in an idea, but they never, ever just invest in the idea. The very first place your investor is gonna start is who is your team. So it is the most important item. And they look for things, they don't look for like how long you've known the person, they don't look for if you went to eighth grade together, they don't look for if like you guys go golfing, I don't know. Um, they look for experience, expertise, and diversity of skill sets. Um, and sometimes they look actually for diversity. 
So you're going to put together in your deck, and I'm telling you in this slide where it should go, people either stick their team in the very front if, it's extreme, if your team is extremely impressive, or they also stick the team slide at the end so people can look at it and compare it to the value of the proposition. There are really three buckets of a team. Your corporate leadership, here's your CEO, your CFO, that's your financial person, your COO, that's your operations person. Who's your corporate leadership? Who is running this? Who are making the serious and major day-to-day -day operational decisions? Your board. So your board, depending on the stage of your company, this kind of means like something different, having a board. Um, you don't always have to have a board, like an actual official board. Um, that will be dependent on where your company is at, how it's funded, so talk to a lawyer. Um, but if you have a board, a real board, and they are impressive, you should put them in there. And then your advisory board. What is an advisory board? An advisory board is the like most important tool in your toolbox sometimes. Those are people who maybe you give a little bit of equity to, and they know people with money, they know have connections in the marijuana industry, they have connections in natural products, um, and they're going to, uh, other than the little piece of equity they get, they're really gonna provide you like free support, right? You're not paying them a salary, you're not giving them a paycheck, um, but really they're just there to make connections. They're there for you to call, and they're also there to look good on your pitch deck. We talked about strategic plan, right? So we're breaking down all those items that need to go in your deck. What's next for your business? How are you gonna get there? Why is the right idea? How is that plan going to make everyone money? What is the timeline and proof you're executing? So let's go through these really quickly. Your strategic plan is something you should, you should have your strategic plan before you sit down and do your deck because it's also like how you're gonna make a business. So you need to be able to say, we're a dispensary catering to the people over 60 because we're in Green Valley. How we're gonna get there is that we've secured a location, we understand the demographic, we've built a brand around there, and like as soon as we get the funding, we're gonna be able to start our build out. Why is it the right idea? It's the right idea because people, as you saw in this presentation, people over 50 are consuming cannabis or marijuana at a higher rate than millennials, even though that feels like it's counterintuitive. It's the right idea because it's white space. Nobody else is doing it. There's no other dispensary. It's the right idea because we're over 50, so we understand the demographic. I think you get the idea. How is that plan gonna make everyone money? Investors do not invest in you as a favor. They wanna know how you're going to make them money. That is a full stop. So how is it gonna make everybody money? It's gonna make everybody money because this market is enormous. It's had X amount of year over year growth. Every day we're converting new users and those new users are in the demographic that we're targeting. What's the timeline? You're gonna to have to say, this is what we're doing in year one. This is what we're doing in year two. By year three, we're expecting to do distributions. That's how you get rich. Proof you are executing. So if you haven't done anything, it's just an idea, right? You're like dreaming together. And that's not really what you wanna do in your pitch deck. Proof you're executing is putting on a slide, your, one of your strategic plan slides, something that says, you know, January 2022 secured a location. January 2022 received our license. Engaged executive team February 2022. To be able to show people that you have not just have a good idea, but you're executing on that idea. Market and data information. So again, you're the expert. Don't assume your investor knows everything about cannabis. Understand the broader market. What is your particular market? What are the pain points? What does that mean? What are the pain points? Um, that's a phrase you hear all the time, right? So, or you will hear all the time if you haven't. So like, investors wanna know that you understand what's hard about this space. Banking is a pain point. Um, maybe Green Valley do only allows a small amount of um, marijuana establishments there. Um, you know, you have problems with 280E. You also need to be able to say, here are some of the struggles, we know them, and we know how to address them. What's the white space in your particular market? How valuable is that sector? And how are you capturing the opportunity? Again, this is a slide, and your slide will contain information about the market. Arizona is a $1 billion marijuana market. Green Valley has no other dispensaries. Um, you've heard the phrase MSO a few times, multi-state operator. 
Um, it means people, dispensaries or businesses that operate in many different states. So you might put up in your slide information if your plan is to have, to become yourself a multi-state operator, you might put the kind of year over year revenue that they're seeing multi-state operators. Um, those are real milestones, real points that go in your slides. And that's part of educating your investor. What kind of money are you raising? So this is, again, this is an actual slide that's going to go in. You should consider this an outline. So each of these is a slide. So what type of investment? Debt, this is a loan. We're seeking $500, $500 million. Don't raise $500 million. Uh, you don't need it. We're seeking debt. This is a loan. It needs to be paid back. Let's say you're raising debt. You would put on a slide, we're raising half a million dollars in debt. Um, maybe you would even propose an interest rate that you think is um, fair and commensurate with the rest of the industry. Loans can be secured or unsecured, and they're unrelated to giving away part of the company or equity. Convertible debt. We're raising you know, half a million dollars in a convertible note. We expect it to convert to equity at X. It goes on your slide. A safe, we don't need to talk about it because Chi talked about it, or equity. We're raising half a million dollars at a $5 million valuation, and you get X amount of the company. It goes on a slide. How much money are you raising? Be explicit in your ask. I put this in here again, even though I've said it, because if I see another deck that doesn't have how much somebody is raising, I, I don't know, I'll lose my mind. So you just have to say it. It's uncomfortable sometimes to say it, but you just need to say it. And it can actually just be a standalone slide if you want. Um, these are just a little tip, a couple tips. You can be flexible with investors. Um, so I think about this pitch deck presentation alongside the idea that like it's actually going to be put to use. So when you're going out and raising, you can be flexible with investors. Let's say your slide says, I'm raising half a million dollars of convertible debt. And the investor goes, eh, eh, you know, I've done this before. I think you need a million dollars. You're not like married to half a million dollars, right? You can have a conversation or an investor might negotiate with you. You can say I'm raising half a million dollars at a $5 million valuation and the investor could come and be like, that's too high a valuation. So just remember you can be flexible, but you need a jumping off point. Um, and when you're close to a deal, Investors are going to want term sheets and executive summaries with this kind of information. Let's talk about those are. Let's talk about those are in a second. Um, what do you plan to do with the money? Here are just a few things that you can think of for your use of funds. Um, it's crucial that you know how you're going to use it. It's OK to be specific. It's more than OK to be specific. Please be specific. Um, you have to understand your financial model. If you need help, there are resources um, to learn how to work through your financial model. And I'm going to put some stuff up and show you what a financial model looks like. And then you're going to know maybe why you need some help. Um, or at least I need help. So marketing, hires, technology, equipment, licensing, professional services, events, production, product production, R&D, physical space, expansion. That's what I mean when I said earlier, assign a dollar amount to these. And then you're going to pop it in your model. And then you're going to explain to your investor and you're going to put it in your deck how you're going to use the funds. So when an investor sees it, particularly on a cold email um, or where you have an introduction but you don't have a relationship, the deck has to speak for itself. So it's OK to put this stuff in there. This is maybe the most important slide. So you have to tell your investor how they're going to get their money back. right? Not a favor. I said it before. This is called an exit strategy. It must live in your deck. So this is, you're going to go public. I mean, that seems like really ambitious, right? But we have a lot of publicly traded marijuana companies. And when we see federal legalization, we're going to see those publicly traded here in the United States. I think quite a few of them. So you can say, look, we're really ambitious. We think we're going to go public. Here are, here's the data, right? And you heard it from Chi. Here's this company that went public in Canada. Here's this company that's publicly traded. We're going to be able to do this, and here's how. Sale of the company. There are lots of deals um, that are done between operating facilities, 
right? So you're gonna say, look, we're gonna build five of these. We're gonna build 10 of these. We're gonna be everywhere. And then someone's gonna buy us for a billion dollars. And that's how you're gonna get your money out. Lots of revenue. So the other way to get your an investor's money back to them is to make a bunch of money and to make distributions on that, that money. And without retreading what she said, you're gonna have to be able to explain to people that they're gonna get their money out first. But it needs to go in your deck, not with such specificity, how they're gonna get their money back and it can go under exit strategy. That's also its own slide. I said this already, so I'm gonna go quickly through this. Um, you have to understand your financial model. You must have a model made. You must be an expert in your model, even if it makes your brain explode like it does mine. It's okay to get help. It supports your use of fund. It supports your exit strategy, your revenue model, your costs. It supports everything. And I put this in here again because what I want you to know is it's a living document. So, you know, you might have an investor who comes in and looks at your model. And if you haven't seen how Excel functions, it's worth going and looking at Excel spreadsheets. I'm gonna put one up here in a second. Um, but it is something that an investor might say, you know what, what if we add another store into this model? What if we added a brand into this model? So it is a constantly evolving model for fundraising and it is absolutely a constantly changing uh, document for um, your growth. And then it helps you understand your runway. What's runway? Runway is, how much time, right? If you think about like taking off on a runway, um, it's how much time that capital buys you. So an investor is likely to say to you, how much runway does that give you? And you're gonna know your model and your model is gonna be available in your data room, which we're gonna talk about. And you're gonna be able to say, half a million dollars gives me an eight month runway. And here's how I know that. And that's how you know when you're gonna have to go raise again. So it's really important because investors are gonna ask you how much, essentially how much time are you buying yourself with this raise? And also you should know that term so when they say it, you know what they're talking about. Understanding your competitors. Um, you'll often see in a pitch deck, again, remember these are each slides. Um, understanding your competitors. You need to know who you are racing against. Um, when I went to law school, one of the professors said this like really stupid joke and it was really stupid for law school because it didn't feel very competitive, but it feels just right for the marijuana industry, which is there are two guys in a tent and they hear a bear outside the tent and one guy starts lacing up his sneakers. The other guy says, why are you lacing up your sneakers? You can't outrun a bear. And he says, I don't have to outrun a bear. I just have to outrun you. And that is marijuana industry in one stupid joke I heard in 1998. Um, and investors expect you to know that. Who are you racing against? Who are your competitors? I think on every slide I put this, now that I'm looking at it, where I say you need to be an expert, and we really mean it. You need to know your competitive landscape. Why are you different? Why are you disruptive? Why are they succeeding or failing? So what's working for them? Let's say you're gonna start a delivery company you should know that there's pot mates and there's ease and these other companies and like this one's not doing so good and this one's doing good and here's why we're gonna do better. And we're gonna talk about what that kind of analysis looks like on the next slide. Um, and I put this in here, be prepared to answer hard questions. Um, I mean, ease, men, men, capital markets, Akerna, yikes. Um, maybe that was like a little bit of stream of conscious on my part, but it is, you know, investors want to see, they're reading about the market, and so they want to know why you aren't ease. Why are you not mes men men? You know, why are you going to be successful? So some of you may have heard that it's a SWOT analysis. Um, I kind of have like mixed feelings about putting this in your deck, but um, some people really like it. So those are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, it's a good way to think about your competitive analysis, things your company does well, qualities that separate you from your competitors, internal resources such as skilled knowledgeable staff. You can kind of go through this and say, what are my company's strengths? What are our weaknesses? What are our opportunities? And who are our threats? And it's, it's an analysis that investors sometimes like to see in a slide deck. 
I leave that up to you. I put it in there because some people ask for where it, where it is in times where I've left it out. What else do you need for your investors? So you need your financial model. You need an executive summary. I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like. Um, you're going to need term sheets, and you're going to need corporate and investment docs. So pitch deck, financial model, executive summary, term sheet, corporate and investment documents. I am going to say something else to you, which is that as your company matures and you are operational, which I hope you all are operational and successful, um, you're going to need to give investors more than this. But for right now, when you're going out and raising money after you win and you're super excited about you know, creating all this generational wealth, um, you're going to need these things. So where do your documents live? Um, this is called a data room. And again, some of these are terms you should just like know because investors are going to be like, can you connect me with your data room? And so a data room is where your documents live. So for you guys who don't have an operational business yet, you're not going to have all this stuff in here, right? You're going to have your deck. You're going to have your executive summary. You're going to have your model. And you might put your licensing stuff in there. So like, it's basically everything for an investor to diligence you. So if I'm going to invest in you, I'm going to say, I want to make sure you're telling me the truth. I want to make sure I can look at everything with my own eyes. And it's all going to live somewhere. So this is a secure place um, without endorsing any companies. I suggest you Google Data Room. And there are a number of different companies that provide this service. Um, and it's really great and also makes you look sophisticated to investors to be able to be like, yeah, you just go visit my data room. So financial model. What are some things that could go in your financial model? Um, and what might a slide look like? So you can just disregard the kind of content on the slide that's coming up next. But after you've done your mo model, what might you put in there? Um, you might put a capital deployment slide. So this is kind of like use funds, right? So let's pretend this is a real slide for you. Um, this is how we're going to spend the money that you're giving us. Majority of capital is going to be spent acquiring assets. This is just an example, so it's not what you're going to put in there. Acquiring assets, both licensed dispensaries and cultivation facilities at attractive prices. prices. We're doing a brand launch. That's not going to cost us very much money. And we're keeping our corporate spending lean. And then you're giving some milestones. We're going to have three to five acquisitions in the first 12 months and three to four facilities online in the first 12 months. And then you have this like pretty grid, pretty pie chart. Um, so an investor can quickly look at it and be like, this is how they're spending their money. Now I know. These are, oh, this is a very small piece of what is called a performa PL, um, but it is kind of like how you might approach your financial model. So, and I mean approach it not in terms of like broadly, but in terms of um, what you might stick in your deck. So you do your model, and your model demonstrates in this case sales, cost of your goods, your gross profit, and your net income. So the nice thing about this, and this is what I was talking about earlier, and I just want to walk over here and show you. So this shows you here initially, you're going to lose money. So right, and investors expect that. They're not expect you to make money out of the gate. And then, but look, year two, wow, I had 11% growth, wow. Um, and they, we made $2.5 million. But look at this. Year five investor, I'm going to make $16 million. And you're substantiating through this model, which is a living document, which will go in your deck for investors to be wowed. And if you really want to get complicated, you can really start talking when you talk to investors about the difference between the total revenue and the net income and why those things matter to them. Look, $72 million. And it also has this little chart over here that's another good way for investors to visualize. I promise there are people to help with this, so you should not be intimidated by creating these slides. What else is in your data room? This is like a kind of form uh, executive summary. It's like a one-pager. There's like no sort of formal thing that needs to be in there. 
But if you would think about it, you should think about it in terms of like an absolute summary of what you're doing. Um, I don't think that investors use it as much as they use the pitch deck, um, but I think it's like also a good exercise for you. So it's like, uh, and most people use a kind of model like this, which is why I put it up there, which is here's our pitch, here's our idea, here's the problem we're solving, here's how we're solving it, here's our business model, here's the market we're addressing, here's our competitors, here's our competitive advantage, here's how we plan to go to market or our strategy, and here's our traction. And I think when you're processing how to build the deck, you might note that all of those things are basically exactly what I just told you put in your deck. So that's kind of a reflection of how one might approach your executive summary, but it's a reiteration on a one-page format of what's in your deck. I would also suggest, and I, I think this example actually is pretty good, is that here's your contact information, because I know that the Zoom is a little itch iffy. Here's your use of funds. So 25% to product development, 35% to marketing and sales. Here's your team, right? Because they're not just investing in an idea, they're investing in you and your team. And then here's your advisors. Remember, greatest tool in your toolbox. And then if you have financials for later, you can put that same kind of financial model on a miniature version at the bottom. You do not need it for this time. This lives in your data room. Um, a term sheet is a legal document. If you take anything away from this presentation, it's that you should not go download a PDF from the internet. Um, and you should not go to legal Zoom and make your own term sheet. So like, this is a real document. Um, it's a legal document. And it explains the financial terms of investment. So it needs to explain, depending on what you're doing, the type of shares. It's meant to be negotiated. There's some securities information. By the way, securities law is like a real kind of law, and you could break that law. Um, so that's why you need a lawyer to help you. And I put this at the bottom because I've looked at, I don't know, 700 term sheets that somebody like yanked from the internet, Rocket Dog. I don't know where they got them, and they're total garbage. So like, go pay a lawyer to draft your term sheet. Um, and investors are going to ask you for it. If you do not have it, you might lose your investor. So it's, you should think about these things as like an opportunity to be thoughtful about what your business looks like, right? So like, how are you structuring this investment? And how is that structure of the investment reflective of your business strategy, right? So if you're raising straight debt, you're not really gonna have an investor who's involved. If you want the skill set of the investor and you think you have a good investor, and there's a difference between good money and bad money, that's like a real thing, then maybe you're thinking, we're going to bring this guy on or this woman on, and we're going to give them some equity in exchange for their capital, and we want an active investor. We want somebody, we're doing equity because we need those skill sets that the investor brings. So just be thoughtful about it. And that's it. Um, I, I guess I want to leave for this presentation with one final word of advice, which is that if you win the license, this process is going to seem overwhelming potentially. Maybe not, maybe you got this, maybe it doesn't seem overwhelming. But many, many hundreds of thousands of people have done this before you, and you are capable and competent and able to do this if you want to. There are resources to help startups. There are people who want to support social equity applicants. You can do this. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Do not be afraid to ask for support. Do not try and do this on your own, but it can be done. 